Hello, this is George Hayes, and this is Introduction to C, tutorial number five, and we're going to be covering basic functions and get character, simple array, while loop, and we'll go ahead and get started by creating our new projects, console application, uh, C program, and I'm going to label my C005, and go ahead and create that. Uh, open up our source file that's already created and generated for us by the IDE. Delete this statement, go up to the top, and go. We're going to declare our new function that we're going to create, and this one's going to be called get line. It's going to be designed to get a line of characters or the first line or line that's typed in, and it's going to re receive a character. <sighs> pointer or in this case an actual array you have to put a semicolon under after it here and we're going to go down and actually define the function below here this is outside of main and we're going to get line again and here we're going to actually define the pointer it's going to receive is called buffer or we're going to call it buffer and create our function inside their brackets and at this point we're going to create a character C and then we're going to create an unsigned integer n which equals zero and we're going to start off by doing C equals get character which is a standard IO I believe um, library function and what it's going to do is when you type it in something that once this has been called it gives you a prompt for a type and you can type something in and it will then return the first character in the buffer that's for that and that's not the buffer that we're creating it's as far as the input buffer and we will go ahead and show you in a while um, go ahead and build some more onto this C so we're doing a while loop on here also and while C is not equal to slash n which is the new line alright this loop will continue and so it's going to receive every character in as I'll explain it after I finish typing this in a little better and equals C so that's going to fill the buffer that we've received above you know this buffer here is going to be is this here and we'll define what's coming in here in a second via this up here but through your main function but just to understand this buffer here is a pointer to the beginning of this array which we're going to fill in with C and the position we'll fill in will be determined by the value of n. n is going to be incremented each time the loop goes through, and then we'll call another c equals get character because the other one is actually outside the array to call the first one. I mean, outside the loop to call the first one. All right. And then we're going to return n here, and the reason we're going to return n is the n will actually tell whatever calling function if we actually received any data. If it returns a zero, then we haven't received anything. If it returns a one or greater, in other words, anything greater than zero, then we know that it's return, been returned data as far as you know a string of characters of some sort. And then we'll come up here, and this is where we're actually going to do character. And we'll just call it B for now. Uh, and we're going to make this an array of 20 and we're going to set the value currently to a string that is empty then we'll create another integer rv which is going to be in this case a return value rv is just an easy way to remember it for me and you can you could actually go through and name it return value if you choose to do that we'll do print f Please enter your name and put a semicolon at the end. And then in this case, we're going to do RV 
equals get line and then we're going to put in here b and return so what's happened is we've created this character this array up here which is going to be a character array in this case uh, and it's going to get filled in when it sits there and passes it that be beginning pointer value right the uh, pointer points to the very beginning array as far as on it and of the array where it's stored and it gets passed down to this line here as far as in it and then it gets used in here at this section to get filled back in alright and then since that's actually filling in the specific area as far as those address value is with an, those locations at the address value indicated by the buffer plus the n alright so if the address array pointed to let's say a pointer of uh, you know, a byte that was byte 1000 then n would increment through and go to byte 1001, byte 1002, byte 1003 and so on alright and it would fill it in with c for however long c happens to be and then if we go back up to the main function here and we'll go ahead and finish this up and we go if the return value now we have an if statement in here that we're going to add and we're going to go if rv is greater than zero all right then it will go and fill in this part as far as return value otherwise it will skip over this and go out so we're going to print f and in here we're going to do hello and then we're going to put in a percent s for string being sent to it and we're going to go b all right and return value so let's see if it builds correctly and yes it built without any errors if we run it it gives us please enter your name and I'll type in George and then it goes hello George and it says process z return to zero because there's no errors execution time 5.25 seconds press any key okay so what this did then is this fun line here is a function call now and it's calling this function down here alright which in turn fills in the buffer that is actually created you know by the character array that we've passed to it all right in this case we're passing a character array on to this area now if we sit there and pass just a single character without putting the star in front of it like this it won't actually be passing a character or array it just passes the specific character itself you know as far as being empty so you wouldn't get it filled in the same way so we're going to go ahead and back and sit there and put the star back in here so this is actually passing our array of characters to that value and it then gets filled in because it passed the address of it down that's what this in this case is it's actually passing an address to the array that's defined up above here all right so this is the address to this now and that's n is I guess your incrementation as far as the value after that and anyway your conditional statement set up here as far as if again you know fills any condition in here that you put into this and then with the condition is met it does the lines with inside the brackets or the line immediately under it. so if we took these two brackets here out and brought this up and set it there then it should technically still build and do the same thing all right all right as you see and if we sit there and run it again and just hit enter it didn't print anything didn't even print to hello so the condition wasn't met all right and so we'll go ahead and close it, put the brackets back in. I like to try and use the brackets with it. It just seems to be neater, cleaner, and uh, keeps errors from happening.
And that concludes this tutorial, and thank you very much.